John Fedro here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. We're outside, it's a beautiful day, the birds are chirping, and I got the camera pulled way closer to me than usual. Uh, I feel like we're being a lot more intimate right now. We're gonna be talking about an open mobile home title or an open car title and what that means. This is frowned upon in most states. The state doesn't want you to do the deal like this, but I wanna make this video because you're going to see this whether you're a buyer or seller. I wanna talk about why people do this, what you should watch out for if you're a buyer or a seller, and the paperwork involved so you at least know what's going on. You have more clarity of what an open title is. And an open title, uh, it's not wholesaling, it's not buying and flipping, it's the process of dealing with the paperwork in a specific way. Again, this is for a mobile home or a car that's personal property. Normally, if you're selling something, Thing, uh, and your person B, person A is the person you bought it from, the seller, the seller sold it to you, now you own the home, you have the title, you have ownership, if there's no title used in your state, you have ownership, legal ownership, and you do whatever you're going to do to the mobile home or the car, fix it up, do whatever you're going to do, and then resell it to person C. So it goes from A to B to C, and that's because the state wants their revenue. Each time it changes hands, they get paid taxes, they get paid fees and registration costs, and also they want to know, you know, what's the chain of ownership? Who's owned this, and have they, you know, bought and sold it correct correctly? They want to kind of keep their eyes on things. But an open title is the process of skipping over you legally and going from the person that is selling it. They're going to sell it directly to person C, but they might not even know each other. You're still the one in the middle. So let's talk about why this is, how this works, etc. If you're a buyer and seller, hold off until a little bit in the video. We're talk, we're, we'll talk about buying and selling and what to watch out for in just a minute. Let's first talk about the paperwork. I want you to step into the position of person B right here. Um, and person B is talking to person A, that is the seller. So the seller is now selling the home to person B and here's what person B will do if they're gonna consciously know that they're going to do this open title type of process they're going to take the title and in most states there's a mobile home title there's a car title not every state there's six or seven states that do not use titles uh, but when you do have a title or something else that you send in in lieu of a title the seller is definitely going to sign their name the seller signs and prints their name the buyer which is kind of you in this point, your, your, your person B, you are not going to sign the title. You're not going to sign the bill of sale. Oh, there's a plane. I guess that's the trouble of being outside. Gets distracted every which way. Uh, notary if needed. Most of the time a notary isn't needed, but if a seller signature needs to be notarized, then have that notarized. You want to leave the price blank and then the date blank as well. If it has to be notarized, then the notary will likely want to have a date put in there. But ideally, the note, the date's blank, price is blank, uh, these are left blank on the title, the buyer is left blank, um, and that's the title. If there's two titles, then this is for both titles. Also, the bill of sale, it's gonna look very similar. In most states, a bill of sale is needed, and if it's not needed, you should still obtain one. So a bill of sale, the seller, again, is gonna sign it, yes? Is the buyer is not going to sign it. There's not going to be a buyer. The notary, if needed, the notary signs a bill of sale. Uh, no price on the bill of sale and no date on the bill of sale either. Now, this is the copy for the investor. So for person B, this is the copy that they're going to take with them. They're going to take this bill of sale. They're going to take the title. Both of these signed by the sellers. You're going to give the bill of sale a different bill of sale. This is another original, but it's for the seller. And the difference is everything is filled out, if, if there, except the notary. Don't You don't have to notarize anything. But sellers, yes. The buyer should be you. The price, yes. The date, yes. Whatever you're buying this for, let's say $5,000 from, from A, you can put that in there and the date. And this is the one handed to person A. So they can go ahead and hold on to that. And then any additional state forms, that's going to be the same as the forms that you're walking away with. Meaning, just like the title, just like the bill of sale that you walk away with, yes, it's signed by the seller. And additional forms are only needed in some, some states as well. Uh, the buyer will not sign. The price will be blank. The date will most likely be blank. It'll be notarized if it needs to be. But again, the buyer's info will be blank. So now you have these forms as person B. You have a signed title, you have a signed bill of sale, you have other paperwork, you have everything needed to transfer this mobile home or this car from person A to person B or to you. 
but you're not going to. You're going to keep these unsigned and the signatures blank uh, with, the, with regards to the buyers. That's what makes this open. Now this paperwork right here is half signed and that makes it open. So that's the open title. And when you find person C, they want to go ahead and buy the home from you. Well, perfect. Let's go ahead and just fill out the buyer's information. Let's date it. Let's put the price on it. Now the, sell, now the buyer, person C, will have all the correct paperwork and they can go ahead and get them transferred into their name or they can get the, the ownership transferred into, into their name. So it will go from party A on the state level to party C on the state level. You know, really you were in the middle of this transaction, but you're not really listed anywhere. Except for that bill of sale that you did give to the seller, they can walk away with that. They want something to validate and to verify, yes, you know, this, this transaction did, did happen. I hope that that first part really made sense with regards to paperwork. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please comment them below. Let's right now um, picture yourself as person C in the transaction. And I want to explain why you will see this in different situations. And most of the time, there's nothing sketchy or shady going on. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of normal reasons why you will see this. So the first reason is because uh, maybe you're talking to person B and the title belongs to person A. But person B is a grandson, a granddaughter. They're a neighbor to person A. And they have all the title, the bill of sale signed. Now person B is holding on to it. That's a trusted grandson or a son or a daughter. And I'm helping my mother or my grandmother sell their property to person C. So person C is talking to the daughter, but the daughter isn't the owner. You know, it's really the grandmother's house. Um, which is okay. So I mean, that, that's like a normal situation. Still frowned upon at the state level, but it happens regularly. Or a neighbor is out of the state or out of the country. Um, other times, there might be a sketchy situation. The granddaughter may have stole the title and forged the signature. Or maybe there's taxes due, or there's liens due, or there's something due, um, and the, this person can't put the title into their name. They bought the home, they realized, oh, I didn't do all my due diligence, and now I can't put the title into my name. Now they're looking to pass that pro problem off to person C. Hold on and keep watching this video because we're gonna be talking about the due diligence to protect yourself as a buyer and seller. Um, other natural, normal reasons is because this buyer, maybe it's you, maybe it's someone that you're buying from, um, they wanted to save money. They didn't want to put the, the home into their name because they'd have to pay transfer tax or registration costs or any fees associated with that transfer. And they knew they were going to sell it quick. The person, like if you are the investor and you're saying, John, I'm going to buy this home, not do any work and resell it. Well, you may have to wait a couple weeks for the title or the ownership paperwork to come back from the state. So now for those few weeks, do you sell it? Do you not sell it? Can you sell it? You don't have the correct paper. I mean, you don't have the title didn't even come back. So it can be quicker to skip over the middle person and go right from A to C. Also to keep your name off of public record so that it doesn't show up that you've owned 50 mobile homes or you're holding X many right now or in the past year you've done this many you know, buy and sell type of, type of deals. So there's normal reasons why this would happen. Now I just mentioned that this could seem shady. You know, if you are a buyer and you go talk to a seller and you see that, oh, the person on the title is not the person I'm talking to, uh, that can be shady and that will scare away some amount of buyers. So if you're selling the home with an open title, you're selling it this way, you're not the one physically on the title, um, you will have some amount of buyers just not want to do the deal. They're gonna just walk away, they're gonna get sketched out, and they're not gonna to wanna to do the deal with you. They're more savvy buyers, they know what they're looking for, and they just don't feel comfortable with it. Now, you could transfer the home into your name and then transfer it to them if they're giving you a real big price that no one else will give you, but you should not have to lower the price with an open title. If you don't have the title, like it's gone and missing, then that's a different story, and you should lower the price if you're selling the home to person C and there's no title, you should disclose that of course, and you should lower the price 50%, 40%, 30% if there's no title and there's no way to get title. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about if there's an open title. And if there's an open title and some people say, well, hey, I don't, you know, I'd rather you own it and I just don't like this, I'm getting sketched out, you should not have to lower the price with an open title. There will be other buyers out there that will happily take it. Um, 
uh, as long as the transaction goes through. Now, if you are a buyer that's going to be living in the mobile home yourself, please click the link in the description. We talk about the due diligence state by state to make sure you don't get taken advantage of as a buyer and the paperwork involved. So click the link in the description if you plan on living in the home yourself. If you're gonna be buying this home uh, for an investment property or just to live in yourself, try to close on it. Do it the right way where you actually take ownership if possible and you put the home into your name. If you're an investor, you should put it into a company name or the name of a trust, ideally. Then you can sell it to person C. Uh, so try to go that way. If you are a buyer, the ultimate foolproof way to make sure you don't get taken advantage of is to set an appointment at the title transfer department in your state that transfer mobile home titles from person to person. But if you go there as the buyer and you don't give your money to the seller until everything goes through completely, that is the foolproof way to make sure that, you know, you're not giving away your money without getting full proper ownership is to go to the state level and transfer all of the paperwork with the title with the bill of sale with any additional state forms so if you're really super like cautious and you just can't sleep at night you don't want to be taken advantage of as a buyer well click the link in the description do all that due diligence understand how to close and then go to the state the title transfer office in your state um, and then transfer the title yourself. You'll go as the, the, you're the buyer, and you'll go with the seller. The seller will hold on to the paperwork, the seller will hold on to the, onto the keys, you'll hold on to the cash, and when you're there at the department, you can transfer everything and sign everything, and you can actually do the closing there. That's if you're a buyer and you really wanna make sure things are done uh, correctly. Now, if you're a mobile home seller selling a mobile home, realize that if you just give all the paperwork to person B, that doesn't change the ownership at the state level. So taxes, uh, liability, ownership, it still shows that you own the mobile home. So just be aware that some buyers, they may keep an open title, they may transfer it to someone and they don't know if it gets fully taken out of your name. The point is that five years down the road, you could realize on the state level, the state still thinks that you own this home and you've been supposed to be paying taxes on this for the last five years. So important to just understand the, the process uh, and what an open title is. Um, and if you are a seller, you can go and transfer the paperwork yourself. I mean, not yourself, but you can go down to the buyer with, with the buyer and have them transfer everything into their names as well to make sure it's taking, taken out of your name. But I have to say that most sellers won't have a problem with this open title. If you're paying cash and you're just giving them the money, most sellers aren't going to have an issue with the buyer's name being blank um, on the title or on the bill of sale. So um, just be aware of what you're doing. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to comment below. Feel free to email me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it made a lot of sense. Uh, please like it or share it if somebody uh, that will help somebody. Uh, it'll certainly help the channel's algorithm on YouTube here. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. If you have any other follow-up questions or thoughts for future videos, comment them below. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.